Welcome everyone. My name is Pramod Bisal, an IIT Delhi graduate, and currently I am an RSME officer. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the mechatronics basics, which is uh, how exactly we started using mechatronics over our traditional mechanical engineering. Uh, or our uh, traditional mechanical only designs okay so traditionally what we used to have is a mechanical only design means we used to have only linkages and the interconnection between these linkages uh, in order to carry out our desired uh, output or whatever the result that we wanted from a system okay so uh, in order to explain the concept here better let's take an example of a steam engine okay you can relate that example with the uh, fuel supply in a carburetor also Okay, so uh, for example, I am having a steam engine which is driving my load. So I am having certain load here and which is being driven with the help of a steam engine and these two things are connected with the help of a shaft. Okay, so there is a shaft which is connecting these two. Now, whenever my load value is either increasing or decreasing, accordingly the fuel supply to the steam engine or the steam supply to the engine shall increase or decrease okay so whatever is the uh, steam that is being supplied to this engine is being controlled with the help of some valve here okay now this valve opening must be uh, connected or this must be controlled as uh, uh, as demanded by the speed of this particular shaft okay so whenever the shaft is rotating let's say either the speed is increasing or decreasing so accordingly the valve opening should either increase or decrease in order to have that what we have here is basically i will be having some bevel uh, gear arrangement here and then a governor applied here okay so that governor let's say the governor is having balls onto this okay and there is a sleeve attached to the governor right so whenever my speed is increasing okay so i'm considering the case of a speed increment here whenever the speed increases these balls will fly outward right their position will change to this particular uh, location because of which the sleeve will move upward right and this upward movement now the valve opening should increase okay so as the speed is increasing valve opening uh, should increase now how exactly do i calibrate these two or how exactly do i get the valve opening with the help of speed increment so this sleeve is connected to the valve with the help of a linkage okay so let's say this is my linkage which is connecting the sleeve to the valve and there is a hinge over here so whenever this is moving upward this hinge will keep it in this particular position only but because of this moving upward this will come like this right and the sleeve is moving upward so this should increase the valve opening here fine now whenever i am using this linkage system so what will be the main or basic function of these linkages is number one i am using the linkages as uh, my transmitter or my power transmitter okay so it is basically transmitting power from one point to another point whatever linkages that we are having or whatever mechanism we are having and then second thing that these linkages are also acting as a computational element now what do we mean by computational element that whatever is the valve opening that i need based upon my speed that opening will be calculated with the help of this linkage and whatever is the length of the linkage and the position of this hinge will calculate the valve opening or it will convert this speed into the opening of the valve so this is my computational element now so uh, whenever we are using a mechanical only design i will be having certain problems associated with it okay and the very first problem that i have is computational flexibility that means the linkages and the interconnections will limit what is the uh, end effector movement i can have okay so uh, limitation to the uh, limitation to end effector motion okay so the sort of motion or the type of motion that i can have at the end of my linkages will be limited because of the interconnections i cannot have all the possible movements or all the possible motions at the end of my end effector right then second it will be having a uh, flexibility issue what do we mean by flexibility issue that once i have designed a link once i have made a mechanism its motions get fixed over there okay so i cannot get another motion from the same linkages or if i want different kind of output or if i want a different motion at the end effector then i will need to change the whole linkage or whole 
mechanism system okay so uh, same structure either it will be needed to modify it or we cannot use it at all now because of these two problems we basically started using mechatronics here which was the concept given by uh, mechatronics concept given by japanese in 1970s okay so in 1970s we basically started using mechatronics which basically means the application of electronics okay so as the name itself suggests so traditional definition of mechatronics is application of electronics and computer technology so both of these things we are using here uh, electronics and computer technology to control the motion okay to control the motion or the movement of a mechanical system so we are still having a mechanical system but its motion are being controlled with the help of electronics so uh, traditionally when we say like uh, conventionally or traditional definition of mechatronics it basically says that i am having some mechanical system means i am having a mechanism here okay and that mechanism is being controlled with the help of electronic system okay so uh, finally what i get here is mechatronics right so that gives me mechatronics concepts now the basic idea behind using mechatronics is to separate or isolate okay so if you talk about why mechatronics why are we exactly using mechatronics the number one to isolate the computing or uh, the decision making device from the actuating device to so isolate decision making and computation i will say okay so isolate decision making and uh, actuation sorry so the actuator will be different and the decision making which is our processor basically that will be different so we have uh, isolated these two things earlier the linkage was doing both of these operations actuation as well as the decision making now we can take the decision separately with the help of some electronic arrangement or some electronic device and then we will having a separate actuator to execute that particular desired uh, motion or the uh, whatever we want to have at the end okay then second is we will exploit that isolation to enhance the computational complexity so using a mechatronic system can enhance the computational complexity okay so we can have better and effective motions uh, with the help of uh, this particular system with the help of mechatronic system okay now in order to do these things or in order to uh, have a exact mechatronic system we will include not only electronics and uh, mechanical engineering but other fields also okay so uh, this will basically include number one electrical systems or electrical engineering concepts will be having them okay second will be having mechanical of course mechanical related concepts then we have computer engineering right that is uh, we already know how exactly do we use uh, the computers to process or to give commands or to control our actuators and then we have control engineering the concepts of control engineering we are going to study in detail later in our third category of mechatronics okay so all these things we use at the stage of design itself okay so at the stage of design itself we are going to use all these things combinedly so that uh, what we can get here to develop so we'll be either developing the products okay the use of mechatronics basically the application of mechatronics is to develop the products processes we can develop the processes or systems okay so uh, we will be developing um, any or all of them with greater flexibility right so uh, we will be with increased flexibility the flexibility has increased over here because we can control everything with the help of a computer programming command right and uh, second that we want to have here is ease in redesign okay we can redesign our system with the help of uh, the programming that we are using okay so by doing a reprogramming or changing the commands easily we can get a different output over here 
okay so uh, the main application or like very widely accepted one application of mechatronics is electronic fuel injection okay so uh, the system that we earlier used to have that is carburetor they have been replaced by electronic fuel injection system okay electronic fuel injection so these electronic fuel injections have basically replaced the carburetors carburetors used to have uh, the working similar as we discussed for the steam engine but those uh, like in our this gasoline engine basically right? so in gasoline engine what we want to do we want to have the mixture of petrol and air and that mixture earlier used to get controlled with the help of a carburetor but these days we have electronic fuel injection wherein it can sense better the requirement and it can uh, give us a like better uh, mixture of air and fuel okay and we will be having much much better efficiency of our engine or of our system okay other than that also uh, we have in cam cam is our this computer added manufacturing so computer added manufacturing also is one example wherein we use the mechatronics related concepts okay so another example is in cam that is computer added manufacturing so we are doing the manufacturing with the help of computers that is what we mean by a computer added manufacturing in our computer aided manufacturing uh, what we get is basically increased production efficiency okay so our production efficiency gets enhanced with the help of cam cam is basically mechatronic system only then we get increased or better product quality the product quality will also increase or that will also enhance then uh, we can always perform the simulations before exact, uh, actually manufacturing the system okay so it will help us help in performing simulations okay so earlier what we needed to do is we had to manufacture the uh, prototype then carry out the experimentation on that prototype and then decide whether the prototype is up to our expected level or not but these days we can directly perform the simulations with the help of computer aided design that is our CAD and then based upon that we can decide that what parameters should be finalized to get a better system to get a better efficiency and the desired result okay uh, also this will reduce human intervention okay so whenever human intervention is there there will be certain errors associated with our production okay our production either may reduce or the quality may deteriorate of our product so we will reduce the human intervention with the help of mechatronic systems okay now in order to do all these things so whenever we are saying that we are having a mechatronic system so what are all components of a mechatronic system okay so when i have a mechatronic system what exactly constitutes a uh, mechatronic system right mechatronic components so initially or uh, very first let's say i will be having a sensor which will which will be sensing certain attribute which is to be measured okay now a sensor can be either analog or digital and this sensor will give data to our uh, microprocessor but microprocessor is a computer based system that will take only digital data so in case our sensor is analog we will need to have a adc over here what is adc adc is analog to digital converter so analog data will be converted into digital data over here and then it will be fed to the microprocessor okay now it will go to the microprocessor that based upon the programming will uh, take a decision and then that decision is again a digital decision okay but our actuator will need a analog one mostly most actuators uh, work based upon analog data so this will be needed to be converted into analog okay so we will have it okay so that microprocessor will give uh, command to a digital to analog converter so finally we will get the analog data and that analog data will be uh, sent to a actuator device okay so what is actuator that will basically execute the command given by microprocessor or the microcontroller whatever system we are having there okay this is basically microprocessor based control system this is our control system okay and then actuator will uh, then execute it over or with the help of a 
mechanical system okay so we would be having some mechanical system or a mechanism which will be actuated or which will be uh, operated with the help of the actuator and then again we can sense the output of this mechanical system okay then uh, based upon that sensor we, this will again be fed to the adc that is our analog to digital converter the controller and then this process goes on this is basically a closed loop system so if uh, this system uh, this linkage is there then we will call it as a closed loop if this is not there means we are initially sensing something and then we are uh, doing or carrying out some work then it will be called as a open loop system but most of the mechatronic system are closed loop ones only so from sensor it will go uh, to our adc then it will go to our control system to our dac to actuator and to the mechanical system so these are the basic constituents or the components of a mechatronics based system okay now uh, that was all about the basics of a um, mechatronic system or the computational system now in our next video we are going to discuss about the sensors so we will start with actuators and sensors we will first finish that part actuators and sensors and then we will move to the electronics part okay thank you for watching the video and best of luck for the exam